And hello, everybody, and welcome to Unit 3. We're going to be discussing psychological disorders and dementia and end of life. Now, I know that sounds a bit strange as a set of topics to put together. Um, and also, it might sound a bit strange for a nutrition course, but they all do relate. And they are important for, the, for their impact on nutrition. A couple other things to mention here very quickly before we go into it. Uh, these are very uncomfortable topics for a lot of people. If you haven't had experience with them in the past, they feel... They're very uncomfortable, especially end of life. It is something you need to know and need to be comfortable with and from, at least familiar with working in geriatric care. But it is not something that comes easy to most people. Um... Also, I think it should be noted, just for the record, that uh, I am not an expert. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a therapist of any sort. This is not going to be a discussion of these conditions so much as it's going to be what their impact is on nutrition. Okay? So, with those legal disclaimers out of the way, what we're going to do here is we're going to define some terms we're going to be using for the, uh, the throughout the unit. We're going to compare and contrast psychological disorders and dementia in very broad strokes. Uh, there's obviously a lot in this. These are huge fields. And one, again, I'm not an expert. Two, we don't got time. So we're going to do very, very broad strokes on these. We're also going to briefly highlight the differences between approaches on, for dementia and psychological disorders. We'll go a little bit more in detail into them as we get to each one. Okay. So the first uh, phrases, I guess, the, the first terminology we'll discuss is a neurotypical and neurodivergent. And this, these are simply uh, descriptors for an individual's response. So obviously neurotypical is a kind of behavior or reaction that one would normally expect from somebody given a certain stimuli. And neurodivergent is atypical. An atypical response. It's uh, either it can be like you might have heard neurodivergent thinking, which is thinking in a different manner than one would expect given a set of circumstances or a different reaction or a different behavior. So neurotypical, what you'd expect, neurodivergent, what you wouldn't. Okay, so a psychological disorder. And this is the definition for psychological disorder is rather amorphous and gray. So I know we've already had a lot of that and because a lot of gerontology is amorphous and gray. So you're probably comfortable with this now, but just know this is also amorphous and gray. Uh, a psychological disorder is a dysfunction in an individual that's associated with distress or impairment and a reaction that is not culturally expected. And, and these are important things to keep in mind that it needs to be uh, something that causes the individual distress or keeps them from behaving and interacting. I also want to say behaving. It does keep them from interacting well with their society. So to a degree, psychological disorders are culturally defined. Uh, the best example I have ever read on this is if you go to, um, well, if you don't have to go to, if you're working with a patient from an Indian culture, uh, from the subcontinent of India, People with schizophrenia there often report having very positive interactions with the um, the voices that they are hearing. Uh, they're often very supportive and kind of like having their own life coach on hand versus uh, somebody from the West or from a Western culture who typically finds schizophrenia to be disturbing. They find the voices to be demeaning and abusive and maybe sometimes encouraging them to do something violent. So somebody from, again, from this cultural background of India may not find schizophrenia to be any kind of debilitating disorder at all. You may not even know they have this condition. Whereas somebody from the West is very much interested in help, trying to have these symptoms controlled. Uh, many psychological disorders, probably all of them, but again, I, I, I wouldn't want to say that, they're very poorly understood. They likely have multiple causes, and a lot of them appear to be related to chemical imbalances, but not necessarily all of them, or it might be a 
functional imbalance that occurs later? We're not sure. Uh, dementia is any disorder of mental processes due to physical brain damage. These are typically, the most common ones you see are memory dysfunction, personality dysfunction, or reasoning dysfunction. The difference between dementia and, and psychological disorders, the big one, is that dementia is related to physical degradation of the brain. It's almost You could almost think of it sometimes as chronic brain disease. The patient is not able to do things anymore because the brain physically can't do it anymore. The mechanisms are not there any longer versus a psychological disorder, which is either a chemical imbalance, a behavior, or, or both of these together that may be able to be altered with a combination of therapy and drug regimen of some sort. So we're also going to discuss, and we'll go more into that later. I realize that was a very brief overview. We're not done. So we're also going to talk about breaks from reality. Um, so you might hear someone describing delirium, which is an acute onset of severe confusion. The only thing I can think of that might be related to this is if any of you have ever had a very high fever from an infection, sometimes a high fever can cause a delirious episode. Uh, some drug interactions can if you had a drug, uh, took a medication that did not agree with you and nobody knew that, you might have had a delirious episode. Suddenly things don't make sense, you don't know what's happening, you don't know where you are. It's very, very scary and it's very hard to talk somebody through a delirious episode because they don't understand what's happening. They're not able to process it in the moment. These can uh, represent as either hypoactive or hyperactive, and that's they're exactly what they sound like. Either uh, the reaction, if it's hypoactive, is a depressed, inactive, sleepy kind of reaction. Uh, and I remember that's depressed as in less reactive than you would expect, not depressed as in somebody's bummed. Hyperactive is exactly, again, what you'd expect. It's agitated, restless. They might be anxious or angry, and you might get a mixed reaction in which someone's kind of bouncing between those two extremes. Delirium is often due to physical factors. Again, this might be a fever. It might be a, um, a buildup of waste products. You may see a delirium in somebody with hepatic disease, for example. Um might be a medication drug interaction of some sort. So often once the physical factor has resolved, the delirium also resolves. It's not forever. It's just until whatever has caused was triggered it goes away. A delusion is an incorrect or false belief that is firmly maintained despite contradictory evidence um, and due to a medical cause. Now delusion is one of those terms kind of like theory that has a scientific definition to it and then a general definition to it and they don't really match so in this case a delusion is a belief held that's contradictory and this is due to a medical reason this is not because someone fell down a social media silo and is only getting all of their news from some extremist group okay this is a medical issue either due to psychological factors or um, dementia. A hallucination is an acute instance or perception of something that does not exist. The most common one is auditory, the most common type of hallucination. It can be visual, it can be everything. Any sense you have can it's misfire, I suppose. You can get a hallucination from any sensation, any sense you have that is giving you incorrect information. And very quickly, we're going to talk about interventions. We're going to go back into this later. Um, the inter broadly speaking, the interventions are broken down into reorientation or refocusing, which is a direct confrontation of incorrect beliefs. This is talking to the patient and saying no. We've discussed this. That's not true. Uh, redirection is just distracting the individual with something else. And validation is agreeing with the patient, just rolling with whatever it is that they're saying. Um, again, we'll go into this more as we go on. But generally speaking, 
reorientation and refocusing is used with patients with psychiatric disorders and redirection may be used with dementia. Validation is typically used with dementia patients. All right, that is our brief overview. I will catch you guys in the next one. Y'all have a good day. Bye.